Hello friends, this is me Deepak and I welcome you in yet another video of IT Job Matters. I made this video especially to explain in detail about COBOL DB2 program pre-compile, compile, link edit and bind process. Recently many friends asked me to cover this topic so I made this video. In this video I will be explaining all the utility like DSN HPC, IGYCR CTL, IKJEFT0 and etc in a very detail as well. So let's start. So this is how a complete COBOL DB2 program execution works. Firstly it goes through the pre-compilation process and then it goes through the COBOL code goes through the compilation process then linked edit and load module gets created on the other hand DVRM goes through the bind process and then it it's bind to a plan or package and then to plan so what I will be doing I will be explaining all these stages one by one with the utility which is being used at each stage and a brief description of all the utility what does actually it do the very first stage of COBOL DB2 program execution is pre-compilation process. At pre-compilation process we use utility called DSN HPC. It is a program which is used for pre-compilation. It expands all include copy book which was written in program. It extracts all SQL statement and put it in DBRM and the SQL statements are converted into a call statement to DSN HLI. It is basically DB2 runtime interface module. So if you look at your pre-compiled version of COBOL program or modified source code you will see something of this sort. Your exec SQL and exec statement will be commented out and just below that you will be having this statement that here we can see call to DSN HLI or you can see it at the time of debugging also that your code or your control is not going to these statement and that exec or exec SQL or include statement or any SQL query which you have written it is going directly to call statement This pre-compilation phase, it also generates timestamp for modified source code and DVRM. These timestamps are also called as consistency token, which are in further steps placed into DB2 plan and COBOL load module as well. And these are get verified at the time of execution. It also checks syntax error for SQL statement with the help of DCL gen which is a copy book for DB2. So when we say it checks for syntax then it might be necessary that DB2 should be up. So we should note that at the pre-compilation phase DB2 is not accessed at all. So even if DB2 system is down the pre-compilation will get completed. It checks syntax error of SQL statement or column name or table name by the help of TCL gen. Output of pre-compilation phase is modified source code and DVRM. Now that modified source code from the pre-compilation is then compiled using IGYCR CTL utility. In this step the code is checked for errors and compiled version of code is created that is object code. For uh, IGYCR CTL we give parameters using palm like this. This IGYCR CTL is basically a IBM COBOL compiler utility. It is used for compilation. The compiler option is, are passed using power parameter I have already said. It creates an object module which is non-executable machine language version of the source code or modified source code. There are many options which we specify in PALM. I have included few here like we give dynam no dynam option which decides whether there will be dynamic environment or dynamic call environment in my COBOL program or not. 
then we give rent or rent resident to generate a rent rent object module we use this option in case of CICS then we give SS range no SS range by default there is no SS range if you are giving SS range so it generates a code that checks if subscript or index try to reference an area outside the region of the table let's say I am having a table which is having 10th element or its size is 10 and I'm trying to read 11th element and if you have used SS range in that case error will come but if we have not used SS range then by default option will be no SS range and in that case if you are using 11th element it will allow to allow you to read 11th element but in that case it may return garbage value then we use R mode it R mode instructs the compiler to use relative addressing mode in program then we use number number line is number in source code and it will be displayed if there is any error message so it will display the line number like at which line number that error has occurred at the time of compilation if you are not using that then line number will not come in that case now after the completion of compilation process we have object code now that object code goes through the linked edit process to create load module. At this stage we use IEWL utility. It is programmed to linked edit object module. It is linked editor and links edit the object code to create a load module. At this stage this step resolves the call if there is any call present to external module I mean to say statically called object code if there is no call then there is no much difference between object module and load module except the one that object module is not executable load module is so let's understand this scenario by one example let's say I have a COBOL module and that COBOL module is calling two different other COBOL modules so when my main module goes through the compilation process object code will be created and the other statically called module that has to also go through the compilation process so they will be having their own object code now at the stage of linked edit those other called statically called programs object code gets linked edit in the main module so the main module will be having object code of main module and the called module as well and the load module will be created of those three now just assume like as we have multiple DB2 programs and those are statically linked edited together so the resulting load module will contain consistency token for each so as I have a main module which is calling other two modules so I will be having total three consistency token in my load module and this all three timestamp will be pointing to their respective TVRM and at the time of execution these all three timestamp in load module of the three different object code or program will get verified with their respective consistency tokens in plan now let's talk about the DB2 bind process so this is how a complete DB2 bind process looks like the utility which we use here is IKJFT01 then optimizer statistics run state db2 catalog db2 directory then uh, runtime supervisor is also used in this case at the time of execution so i will be talking about these all utility one by one so we use ikjft01 db2 program is executed using terminal monitor program ikjft01 it executed using ikjft 
वन ए एंड आई के जे एफ टी वन बी ऑल्सो दे आर अल्टरनेटिव एंट्री पॉइंट फॉर आई के जे एफ टी जीरो वन यू कैन सी दिस इन मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे आर यूजिंग दिस अल्टरनेटिव पॉइंट और यूटिलिटी एज वेल द मेजर फंक्शन विच आर परफॉर्म इन बाइंड प्रोसेस आर पार्सिंग एंड सिंटेक्स चेकिंग ऑप्टिमाइजेशन एंड ऑथराइजेशन वट डज ऑप्टिमाइजर डू डी बी टू बाइंड takes tbrm as a input and generates a optimized access path with the help of optimizer which takes or checks table statistics these statistics is generated by run state utility which generally take help of db2 catalog the db2 catalog stores only information about plan and package the executable form of plan or package which is called as skeleton cursor or skct is stored in db2 directory plan and package are nothing but container which contains how your sql statement should get executed in application program or cobol program we specify what we want not how we want it plan contains logic for how when we say plan is executable it means it needs to be executed along with the cobol load module of pre compiled modified source code we have runtime supervisor it is mainly responsible to check what are the time stamp of cobol load module and db2 plan it checks if the time stamp of cobol load module is equal to the db2 plan time stamp then program gets ready for execution else we get sql code minus 818 that time stamp mismatch let's say at run time we have a jcl that specifies a plan name for a particular cobol program and that plan information or that dbrm or package information is not there in db2 catalog or directory at all in this com case this comparison doesn't takes place and in that case sql code minus 805 that invalid plan or dbrm comes now we bind the instruction for the sql that was in dbrm to a plan which is a old method or we bind the instruction in a package and then the package into a plan so this is new trend now the relationship between dbrm and plan and dbrm and package is when we talk about dbrm and plan it's one to many means one dbrm can be bound to a multiple plan but when we talk about dbrm and package one dbrm can be bound to a one package only so let's say if you bound your dbrm into a plan and suppose there is one small changes in program then it will be pre compiled and segregated modified source code and dbrm both will be having a consistency token so in that case you must rewind every plan that uses that dvrm as i said the relationship between dvrm and plan is one to many so it's not guaranteed that the dvrm which we have modified just now will be used in only one plan so that might be being used in other or multiple plans so in that case we must rebind every plan that is using that dvrm and this can be very time consuming as the number of dvrm bound to plan increases due to this it's recommended to not use this approach in many organizations so let's say if we bind dbrm into a package then you only need to rebind that particular package as i said there is only one package for one dbrm so in that case single bind would be enough the only time plan needs to be rebound is when package or collection is added or removed from bind card set that plan is using many times in interview it is asked that there is a modification in cobol part there is no change in db2 statement in the program so in that case is bind is necessary yes bind is necessary 
let's say for COBOL changes what we need we need compile edit and linked edit for creating a load module for compilation we need pre-compiled source so when we go for com pre-compilation at that time we will be having modified source code and we will be using DSNHPC utility so in that case pre-compiled or modified source code will be having different timestamp so the new timestamp is transferred to your load module from the pre-compilation stage now if you don't bind it so timestamp mismatch is obvious and your program will abandon abnormally why because if we don't bind it then our plan will be still referring to or will be still having the old timestamp but as we have recently compiled or compiled or linked deleted our new or modified source code so it will be having new timestamp so timestamp mismatch is obvious in that case SQL code minus 818 will come so we need to rebind it again so that both load module and plan will be having or will be reflecting a new timestamp but we can omit this option or this check if we use the label option at pre-compilation to avoid this bind process in that case you need to use below this step but remember we should or we must use label option only when when we are 100% sure that there is no DB2 changes at all I hope that I have covered or tried to cover most part of this topic if you have any question or any doubt regarding this video do post it in the YouTube comment section below and I will try to include it in my next video thanks for watching I hope to see you in my next video bye bye